All right, we are live and welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Boyd, the chemist, and today we're gonna make some homemade lava lamps. And so here's what you'll need. You're gonna need vegetable oil. I will tell you, I know everyone is, is working with limited resources, so if vegetable oil is something you can't part with, I totally understand. In a sense, you should be able to retrieve the vegetable oil from, from the experiment today. So uh, if you wanna try it, you can reuse the vegetable oil once everything is finished. You have to wait a while, let it settle back in. But anyhow, you'll need vegetable oil, not a lot. Well, actually, you'll, you'll need a, a significant amount. Water, you'll need an empty container, and you're going to need something that you may not have at home, like an Alka-Seltzer tablet. So again, I know vegetable oil and Alka-Seltzer tablets may be difficult, but you also need water and an empty bottle. Okay. And if you can't do it uh, because you're limited in your resources, that's understandable. Just follow along. We'll discuss some aspects of this that are scientifically relevant, and hopefully you'll have fun and learn from this today. All right. We'll get started in about a minute and a half. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I see people are, are chiming in and signing on now. Good afternoon. Good to see everyone. We'll be getting started in about 20 seconds or so. Just want to let people give them a chance to sign on. And again, we're making lava lamps today. You're going to need these four items to do it. You're going to need vegetable oil. You're going to need water. You're going to need an empty container. I'm using just a beverage container, 16 ounce, 20 ounce, should be fine. And then you're gonna need Alka-Seltzer tablets or a reasonable facsimile, something like that that'll cause bubbles, all right? Dissolves in water and causes bubbles. I'll explain that in a moment. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Again, welcome back, I'm Dr. Boyd, the chemist. If you want to see all the experiments that we've done for the last three and a half weeks, I've posted them all to my my YouTube channel. You can find my YouTube channel at show this here, Dr. Boyd the Chemist. All right, so if you go on to YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash Dr. Boyd the Chemist, and you'll be able to see all the homeschool science lessons. That's what I've labeled them on the site, homeschool science lessons. So every one that we've done for the first three weeks are posted already. I'll post the ones from this week, probably Monday morning. And so you can go back and review everything. Also, you follow me. If you're not following me on Instagram, you can follow me there on Instagram at science made simple underscore LLC. All right. So we're going to make some lava lamps. You see what we have here, but we always start with the discussion on safety because safety is the most critical and important aspect of any scientific experiment that I ever run. I must pay attention to safety. I must pay attention to ways I can prevent harming myself or others. All right. And so to do that, typically what I'll, I'll do when I, I enter a, a lab is I'll put on some goggles to protect my eyes or sometimes just safety glasses. I wear the goggles, splash goggles, if I know things are, for example, I'll be working with a strong acid and it could splash. So I'll put the splash goggles on. If I'm not using something like that, then I might just wear safety glasses. Or sometimes I'll be in a lab where people are using lasers. Sometimes I might use a laser. And with the lasers, there are special glasses that block the wavelength of light that the laser is, is working at. And so I'll have to wear 
laser glasses over my eyes. All right, so eye protection, very important. Also, we wear gloves to protect our hands. Sometimes things drop on our hands when we're doing a reaction. We don't want them on our hands, so we put gloves on to prevent that. And gloves, there are different types of gloves, so I have to know before I do my reaction or do my experiment, I must know, will these gloves protect me from the chemicals that I'm using? All right, so the types of gloves, gloves matters as well. Lastly, I do wear a lab coat when I go into the lab because I want to protect my body. I don't want the chemicals I'm working with to get on my clothes or go through my clothes onto my body or open skin on my body. I don't want that. So I'll wear a lab coat in order to protect my body, protect my clothes from getting those chemicals on them. And that way I'm not carrying things home with me. They're not getting in my car, not getting in my, in my home. I leave them there at work with the lab coat. All right. So we do discuss safety every time because it is just the most important thing that I'm that I pay attention to every time I do an experiment. So today you see what we're working with. Are there any safety concerns? Are there any safety concerns? Think about that. What could go wrong with vegetable oil, water, a bottle, and an Alka-Seltzer tablet? All right, today we have minor safety concerns, very minor. The one thing that I think about when I'm using liquids of any type at any time is there's a spill hazard. Okay, so I want to be cautious not to knock things over. Now, if you knocked over vegetable oil and water, all you have to do is clean it up. Paper towel, a rag, something to clean it up. And that's all you would need to do. Sometimes we work with other things that are a lot more damaging. And so a spill hazard is an even bigger problem. But today we're working with items that will not harm, harm us. And so no need for the goggles, no need for the lab coat or the gloves. But we do just want to think about that. And even when we don't need to wear those things, we need to think about safety still, like a spill hazard. Okay, it may not require me to wear the safety equipment, the, pro the personal protective equipment, but I should be paying attention to well, what could go wrong. All right. So with that, did you bring along your notebook? Bring your notebook with you every time. Why? Because you want to take notes. You want to write down what you're doing why you're doing it, what you predict will happen, and then you want to write your results. Your prediction, was it correct? Remember, a prediction that we can test, we call that a hypothesis, all right, a hypothesis. Another way to say it is that it's an idea that you can test. So a prediction or an idea that I can test would be a hypothesis. Or an easy way to remember, because it kind of rhymes, is to say a guess you can test, all right, would be a hypothesis. So we bring our notebooks every time because we, we want to write these things down. Today, your topic is lava lamps. So write that down, lava lamps. And we're making a version of lava lamps that is not like the version that your parents or maybe grandparents would have had at home when they were children in the 60s and 70s, right? It was a really big craze at one point where people were buying these lava lamps and you can still get them sometimes at novelty shops where you see there's some liquid in there and then there's this other liquid that's a different color and it's like going up and coming down and making really strange shapes. And it looks really cool. And honestly, you could just sit there for like 10, 15 minutes just staring at it, looking at all the different shapes that are made in this container. Well, those lava lamps use different materials than what we're using today. And also those lava lamps are in a contained container, uh, meaning they're, they're not open to air, okay? Today, we're gonna make something like that, but you will need to leave the cap off of the bottle that you're using or the container that you're using. How are we gonna do this though? You may recall last week, we made a density tower. Remember the density tower? What do we do with the density tower? What was in it? Do you recall? I hope you're paying attention. All right, last week I took water, I dyed it green, and then I asked the question, if I pour some of this syrup, it was like pancake syrup, if I pour this syrup into the water, where will the syrup go? Will it sink all the way to the bottom? Will it sit on top of the water or will it just mix with the water? You remember that? Do you recall what happened? Now, if you were taking notes like you're supposed to, it should be in your notebook. You can go back and look at it. But I'll just tell you what happened was as soon as I put the syrup into the water, the syrup went right to the bottom. 
and then the water sat on top of the syrup in the container. All right. Then I took vegetable oil, vegetable oil, and I asked the same question or a very similar one. I said, will the vegetable oil sit on top of the water? Will it go through the water and sit beneath the water, but on top of the syrup? Or will it go all the way to the bottom, go underneath the syrup? Will it mix with the syrup layer? Will it mix with the water layer? Remember, I asked that question. And what was the answer? Do you, do you recall what the result was? When we added the vegetable oil, where did it go? Where did it go? Do you remember? All right. Hopefully you took notes. Hopefully you were paying attention. And if you didn't see that video, again, it's posted to my YouTube channel. What we discovered is that the oil sits on top of the water. So then we had three layers. We had a, a layer of vegetable oil, we had a layer of water, and then we had a layer of syrup all in one container. All right. So why did that happen? Do you remember why that happened? Why was it that the syrup went right to the bottom, but the vegetable oil stayed on top and that these three layers were separate? Why, why was that? Do you recall? I mentioned this word density, density, all right? And I showed you a mathematical equation. I said density from a mathematical perspective, we think of the mass of the object divided by its volume, and that will give you your density. But in, in, in more qualitative terms, we would just simply say that the item that had the greatest density will go to the bottom. The item with the least density will stay up top. Right. So that means that the syrup we use was all the way at the bottom while the vegetable oil was all the way at the top. Why? Because the vegetable oil had the least density and the syrup had the greatest density. And the water sat between those two layers because its density was less than that of the syrup, but greater than that of the vegetable oil. All right. The lava lamp that we're using today or we're going to make today works based upon that principle, the principle of density. So we're going to take some water and put it in this bottle. And then I'm going to add vegetable oil. Maybe I'll do it the other way around. I'll do it the other way around so we can see definitively that the water goes to the bottom. No, 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 I'll take it back. We'll do, we'll do water first because I want to dye my water and make it look really cool. To be honest, though, it doesn't matter. I'm using water-based food coloring, and the water-based food coloring will drop all the way through the vegetable oil, and it'll sit on this layer of water and vegetable oil for a little while, but eventually it falls into the water layer, and then it will spread around in there. Okay, I'll do it that way. I'm thinking this out in my head. I, I didn't get a chance to run this this morning, but I think that's the way we'll do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some vegetable oil into this container. And again, I know many people are without resources like oil. I just happen to have extra oil because I do these types of experiments all the time. So I've got a lot of vegetable oil at home <laughs> that is not for cooking, it's just for me doing stuff like this. Okay. Yeah, so let me add a little more, just for effect. Okay. So I've added some vegetable oil. This is more vegetable oil than you will typically use when you cook ever. So I know a lot of people don't want to use or waste the vegetable oil or are worried that if you do it, you can't retrieve it, which you should be able to. So you can just watch and follow along. Next thing I'm going to do is, I think we got, got the Sledges and the Wilsons and the Baileys. Got one of the Goldstein clan here. So I'm adding water. Where is this water going? I'll be honest with you, I've never tried doing this this way. So this ought to be interesting. I'm live streaming something that may not work the way I want it to. It'll work though. So I'm gonna go get my stirring rod. You'll notice if you can see, the water went right to the bottom, but it's formed all these like bubbles, all right? So what that tells me is that there's water, but some of the water is wrapped in the vegetable oil uh, bubbles. What's going to happen is with time, the bubbles are going to burst 
and they're gonna form a completely wa a complete water layer at the bottom. I can actually see it happening already where the bubbles are, are bursting and combining. What that means is the vegetable oil is separating out from the water. I've never done it that way before. So I'm gonna get my stirring rod here. You don't have a stirring rod, you can use a maybe a knife or something. All I'm gonna do is try to mix up the, well, I'll add my food coloring first. When I started the live stream, I, I was gonna do this one way, but I just wanna try something else All right now, see if this works. So I have food coloring here. I'm gonna use red food coloring. And I'm doing this so that we can make a really pretty looking model. Man. So I'm gonna add this water-based food coloring. And you'll notice right away that water-based food coloring dropped right through. It sat on top for a little while, but then it dropped through the vegetable oil layer and into the water layers. A little more just dropped down. Pretty cool, right? So the same thing that happened with the water when I poured it in is happening with those bubbles of vegetable oil, meaning that the water is encapsulated in like a bubble of vegetable oil but once it gets down to the bottom it's going to open up and i just saw some of the food coloring open up and when that happens the vegetable oil will cleanly separate out from the water i'm gonna add a little more water and that'll probably burst the bubbles a little more towards the bottom i add some more bubbles too So we learned last week that the density matters. And we're seeing that again. What's happening is that the water is going right to the bottom. That's what I wanted my stirring rod for so I could spread that food coloring. That was kind of cool. Huh. As I'm doing this, I'm getting more ideas for other demonstrations I can do. Lastly, for those of you who actually happen to have something like an Alka-Seltzer tablet at home, this is a tablet. Again, this is what I'm referring to. You have to get a box. And I have a lot of them because I do demonstrations like this a lot. So I know people may not have them at home. I'm going to take this tablet. Half, I broke it like in half. And I'm going to add it to the container here. And this is what's going to give us our lava lamp effect. But I want to ask some questions about it once you see it. Okay, I want to ask a few questions once you see it. Here we go. Now you'll notice that there's bubbles starting to rise. You can see that. All right. So there we go. Here is our homemade lava lamp. Looks pretty cool too, right? And it gives you uh, the similar feel of what those lava lamps that you see at the stores, it gives you that same kind of feel. So what is occurring? Why is this happening at all, all right? Well, Alka-Seltzer tablets are designed to dissolve in your mouth, right? What's in your mouth? Saliva, lots of saliva in your mouth, right? Well, if there's saliva in your mouth, the Alka-Seltzer tablet, and you'll notice it, did you see that? It went all, the tablet itself went up to the top and then it came back down. I don't know if you saw that. I'm gonna add another one, the other half. Because Alka-Seltzer tablets are designed to dissolve in your mouth, what does that mean? Well, your saliva in your mouth is made up mostly of water. And that means that Alka-Seltzer tablets are essentially designed to dissolve in water. So what has happened here, and I've got quite a <laughs> second tablet really doing, doing wonders here. So what that means is when you put the Alka-Seltzer tablet in water, it's going to begin to dissolve and do what it does. It's going to release these bubbles of, of gas. And as it's doing that, those bubbles rise up. And when they rise up, to release off into the atmosphere, they go up through this layer of vegetable oil. Now, Alka-Seltzer tablets don't dissolve in vegetable oil. Again, they, they dissolve in water, not vegetable oil. You may, you may recall the very first lesson 
that we did back three and a half weeks ago, the very first lesson, we were talking about the hypothesis and we dissolved peppermint candies in water and in vinegar and we tried to dissolve a peppermint candy in vegetable oil. And the same thing is happening here. That one, in that experiment, the peppermints did not dissolve in the vegetable oil. Why? Because they're not dissolved, designed to dissolve in water. Similarly, the, the Alka-Seltzer tablet is not designed to dissolve in vegetable oil, that's what I meant to say, but they're designed to dissolve in water instead. So what happens is it dissolves once it gets to that water layer, but because bubbles are being formed as a result of the contents of the, the Alka-Seltzer tablet, Alka-Seltzer is supposed to release gas, right? Those bubbles of gas are coming up and when they come up, they go into the vegetable oil layer and then they sink back down. The Alka-Seltzer tablet will sink back down. Those bubbles have water on them and attached to them. And so they're not happy in that environment. And then they go back down into the water layer. You see there's one dropping right now back into the water layer. And sometimes there's enough bubbles around the tablet itself to cause the tablet to rise to the top and then sink back down. Because again, it's not gonna dissolve in this layer and it's heavy enough to be pulled back down so once it, it gets here it's not happy then it's going to go back into the water layer and then it's going to dissolve some more so then it comes back up and then it goes back in it's going to dissolve some more and it comes up and it dissolves again right that process repeats until the alka-seltzer tablet is fully dissolved now that means you'll have a few minutes of fun and then to continue this process you'll have to add more alka-seltzer tablets all right now for the people who are using the vegetable oil and they're like, oh man, I just used all my vegetable oil. Well, what you could do is you can wait for the layers to completely separate. And once they're separate and a lot of these bubbles go away, you could take the top layer and actually separate it out from the water. Now in the laboratory, we have these devices called funnels, a special kind of funnels called a separatory funnel. So what I would do is I would pour this content in the separatory funnel, and the heaviest layer will be at the bottom of your water. So I would open it up so all the water would run out of it until just a little bit of the vegetable oil runs out of it too. And then I can retrieve the rest of it. I wish I had one at home. I always kind of wanted one to make Kool-Aid in. Yes, I love Kool-Aid. So, but I don't. What I would do is just wait, allow this to settle, and then you can retrieve your vegetable oil if you want to try it that way. I've added the food coloring just for effect so you can see what was happening a little bit better. And just for fun, before we sign off today, I'm going to uh, put another tablet in there while I explain the last concept. This notion of the bubbles carrying the, the Alka-Seltzer tablet to the top is related to a concept that we will address probably sometime next week. There's this word called buoyancy. Buoyancy. I will write that on my board just so you can see it. And that has to do with things that will float in water and their ability to actually stay afloat or to be to come up in water. All right. So I'll write that word down and we will discuss this more in depth, I believe, next week. And so in saying that, I guess I'll let the cat out of the bag that I will be continuing to do these lessons um, next week probably beyond that as well. But uh, I've got a list of, of things that I think we can do that'll be different than the first four weeks. So we'll continue next week. Buoyancy. So there's some buoyancy to uh, to this process that causes that Alka-Seltzer tablet to pop up to the top of the fluid. Again, I'll hold it up here a little longer. And we'll discuss this concept a little bit more. We're gonna deal with pressure in a bottle of water. We're gonna talk about buoyancy as well. All right, so I'll close out by just doing this one more time and I will tell you something cool you can do if you make this lava lamp. If you have like your cell phone, you could put your phone like underneath it with the light pointing up, do it like at nighttime and then add an Alka-Seltzer tablet and it looks really cool, all right? I've done that on my site, my YouTube channel, so you can see me doing the same thing with light shining through the container if you check that out on my YouTube channel. So I'm gonna put this in here, I'm gonna let it run, and then we'll be done for the day. I'll check it out, pretty cool.
All righty. Well, with that, I want to say thanks uh, for stopping by and checking out the live stream today. Again, you can see this demonstration is called Homemade Lava Lamp on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel, just go to YouTube, search for Dr. Boyd, the chemist. I should come up. Definitely subscribe, tell a friend, share the video. Uh, also, you can go to my YouTube channel and look at the past weeks. The past three weeks are already posted of all the lessons that we've had uh, during that time, during this time. And the lessons that we're doing this week, I'll post those first thing Monday morning. And also, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can find me at science made simple underscore LLC. Last thing, if you want to let me know what you've done or that you were here and followed along and you got it to work, definitely post a video, post a picture, hashtag it science made simple. I can see it. I thank you all who have done that before in the past. It's been, it's been great to see it's paper airplanes and some of the other experiments that people have done. So I appreciate you for sharing and I hope everyone learned something today. I will see you tomorrow at two o'clock Eastern time. Take care.